30 BMW 3 Series, arguably a real game changer for BMW, with over 2 million examples of the E30 being produced throughout its production period from 1982 to 1994, it proved to be hugely popular, and this is all for good reason. Available with a range of power units and in many different variants, it managed to find its way into a huge spectrum of different people's lives. Whether it was to act as the workhorse, the family wagon or the weekend toy, the E30 always was and will always continue to be regarded as one of the true driver's cars. BMW is famous for its string of straight six petrol engines which have, over the course of many years, found themselves in virtually every series of BMW there is. This particular car is a 1989 320i Touring featuring the glorious M20 B20 engine. In stock form this produces 129 horsepower at 6000 rpm and 120 foot-pounds of torque at 4300 rpm. So as you may have guessed, it's certainly an engine that likes to be revved out. Definitely not a bad thing if you ask me. Although I may add at this point that the particular car in question is fitted with an ECU tune, boosting the aforementioned figures by around 10. The 2 litre lump is mated to a Getrag 5 speed transmission driving of course the rear wheels, although through an open differential in this scenario. A limited slip differential could be optioned from the factory and came as standard on the IS models. This particular car is fitted with a set of, non-original to this example, 15 inch BMW BBS alloys, which finish it all off nicely and give a nice gentle reminder of its retro design. So, the E30 BMW 3 Series. Uh, I have to say the uh, chassis on this thing is actually really impressive. It's, it's a really surprisingly balanced chassis. Um, in the dry, it's quite neutral. Uh, you don't really get much understeering unless you really do chuck it into a corner. Um, and then in the wet, you just get a nice bit of progressive oversteer. It's, it doesn't, doesn't snap out even with that open diff, uh, which is really nice. Another thing is the uh, steering. Obviously, it's a hydraulic rack in this and the feel is just unbelievable compared to the newer racks and honestly the feedback from the road is just something else as well I can just feel exactly what's going on it's not the fastest rack in the world but it's certainly very direct um, which is a really nice thing to have you can place the car exactly where you want it on the road and you know, obviously that's a really important thing the Touring model of course is a very interesting one and is a variant that BMW is very well known for even 30 years on Originally designed and built by Max Reisbach in 1985 as a result of him requiring more space for him and his family than his E30 saloon offered, he took the final prototype to BMW, who loved the idea and after minor changes put the Touring into production. The Touring design was obviously very well received and I must say I really do like the look of a nice wagon, as do many others. So that engine, wow, listen to it. Two litre, inline six, naturally aspirated. It's running about 140 horsepower with that chip tune on and about 130 foot-pounds of torque. And it just pulls and pulls and pulls. There's not that much low end, but you wouldn't expect there to be. But once it gets to four or 5,000, it's amazing. It just continues to pull and pull and pull. Listen to that. It's amazing. So much different to the modern turbo engines, obviously. Um, Great. Surprisingly quick this thing as well. The car itself weighs about 1250 kilos. So by modern standards, that's incredibly light, especially for a five door estate car. Those rev matches in nicely. I'm just chucking it into the corners and it just Lovely, really predictable chassis. Lays the power down brilliantly as well. The exhaust note's lovely as well, actually. It reminds me a lot of the uh, E46 M3 engine. 
goes really nice and raspy around 5,000 RPM and it just sounds brilliant. I'll give an example now. You can hear that rasp. Gear shift's nice. It's quite a slack shifter. Um, I have a feeling that maybe some of the bushings are a little bit worn out, but it still slots into gear nicely and once it's got some heat in it as well, it's brilliant. Nice, accurate shift. It doesn't grind or anything like that. It's really nice. It's got quite tall ratios, this thing, actually. Um, first and second are quite low, but once you hit third, it's quite a big jump up. Um, so it doesn't feel the fastest, but like I said, once, it, once you get up in the rev range, it really does start to pull quite nicely and surprisingly quick for a car that's only got 140 or so horsepower and not a great deal of torque, but I'll tell you what, it's amazing down these roads. That steering is just lovely. You can get the heel and toes in as well. Yeah, so back to the handling. I mean, like I said, the chassis is uh, really quite nice and neutral. It's really predictable. I mean, even in the wet, you've got to be a little bit careful with that open diff because it can be a little bit more unpredictable as to whether it's going to step out. But like I said, it, it's nice and progressive when it does and the brake of traction is nice as well. But in terms of actual raw mechanical grip, uh, that's pretty damn impressive as well for the age of the car. Really does like to hang on through the corners. These E30s are obviously known for their sort of orientation towards the driver um, and as I mentioned in the first video we did on this thing you can see in this uh, in this cabin I mean how much of it is just angled towards me in the driver's seat uh, which is great it's just perfectly set up the seating position is brilliant as well you sat nice and low Your steering wheel is just the perfect distance the pedals are set up lovely for heel and toe and rev matching just works great I suppose you could argue you know that this might be the perfect recipe for a driver's car you've got a naturally aspirated engine up front manual gearbox rear wheel drive I mean, what more do you need with examples of the e33 series available from as little as a few thousand pounds it really does make sense to buy cars like this while you still can we all know the advent of electric cars is upon us and in the near future cars like the e30 will very much be a thing of the past if you want that beautiful recipe of a naturally aspirated inline six up front, manual transmission and rear wheel drive, the E33 series really is the car for you.